Hello, hello, hello. It's Friday night. Friday night live with the Cigar Vlogger. If you can hear me, put a one in the chat. Please put a one in the chat so I know you can hear me. Hey, hey, hey. Let's get this party started. How y'all doing? How you doing? How you doing? Welcome, 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 welcome. All right. Now I know you can hear me. That's what I'm talking about. Let me get this thing going, baby. I'm so excited. I'm back in business. I am back in business. Gonna have a little fun tonight and we're gonna educate and entertain. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are back. We are back. And I'm so glad you decided to spend a little time with me on your Friday night on this cold winter night. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We got so much to talk about. Uh, The allegations against Bishop Jakes his accusers, and a little bit of backstory about them. Uh, Then this other thing dropped on my desk with the uh, lawsuit by the Word Network against George Bloomer. And we got a special guest that's going to come up tonight. Uh, So just sit tight. Let's get it started. Here we go. Hey, what's going on? What's going on? What is going on, everybody? What's going on? I am ready to go. I got my notes. And I am ready to get started. (laughs) Boy, so much going on. First of all, I want to say hello to everybody in the chat. Please click like and share this video. I want to welcome all of my chat members and my supporters, uh, first-time visitors. I want to welcome Bishop Jakes. Uh, and his staff and his legal team. I want to welcome um, NASA Jordan and his people. I want to welcome Mr. Odell and the Word Network and his legal team and his people. And George Bloomer, because I know you're watching, even though you got a church service going on right now, I know you got somebody watching. All the Bush people and the people that can't stand me. How y'all doing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gotta get my cigar going. Mm-hmm. I think I might break out the puppy mug. 
next time. Mm -hmm. Had to go get a Cuban cigar for this one. Yes, sir. So just want to get down to it. Let me get to my notes here. See, Bishop Jakes, you are the uh, victim of what we street people like to call a shakedown. Uh, you being extorted, you being harassed, uh, all that good stuff. I don't know whether you did or you didn't do it. Me personally, I don't think you did it. I could be wrong, but I don't think you did. I don't think you're that, uh, what do I want to say? I don't think you're that foul of a person. I really don't. I really don't think you're that foul of a person. But that remains to be seen. You got to do that, prove that for yourself. You got to prove that for yourself, sir. So I want you to pay attention to that little ticker tape down there. This is fair use under Section 107 of the Fair Use Doctrine of the U.S. Copyright. All of my commentary is for entertainment purposes. Everything that I talk about is alleged. I don't have any evidence that this person, uh, Bishop Jakes, did anything. I don't have any evidence that he didn't do anything. But what I am going to talk about is the people that are accusing him. So let's get started. Now, Bishop Jakes, let me get my notepad, put it right here. You are being accused of grooming and sexual misconduct. Uh, would, would, uh, from what I'm understanding, boys underage, um, it's been so far, I don't believe this. I think it's a lie. It said you was in, it's a picture of you out there in a thong holding a peach cobbler. Of all things. But what I am going to tell you what to do, I'm going to give you some advice. Do not settle out of court. Do not mediate. You get you some good lawyers and you fight this thing all the way. You clear your name and you put everybody that's been harassing you and lying on you in the poorhouse at the same time. So since y'all can hear me, I'm going to take these headphones off so I can just talk and be comfortable. So put those over there. Still here, just hold on. Still here. The devil is a lie. You won't get no victory tonight. We're going to do this show. And we're going to do it nicely. So, I the, the person that's accusing you, accusing you, uh, is Manasseh Jordan. That's Bernard Jordan's uh, son. I've seen the videos. He's very vague about what you're supposed to have done to him and all that. Here's the thing, the issue I have with, it, and you should too. He's not the one in the public space that's making videos about you. He's not the one accusing you. Someone else is. At the behest of his dad. Now, his dad got out here and claimed, oh, I support my son. And I'm going to be with him all the way. Mind you, him and his son are estranged. He don't even like his son. He's made statements, allegedly, that he hates his son. You know, it's hearsay. But my point is, all of a sudden, Bernard Jordan is going to come out in public, not on his own platform, on somebody else's platform, and say that he supports his son. Okay. You haven't spoken to your son in a very long time. You tried to discredit your son to have somebody else 
discredit your own flesh and blood and out him in the public as being gay and being on drugs, what have you. But now all of a sudden, now that it's, now you support your son. Find it odd. Bishop Jakes, you're being attacked. Not because of you being attacked because people are mad at you because you wouldn't either give them money or be a part of something they wanted you to be a part of. That's where all this is coming from. That's where all this stuff is coming from. Um, you're being attacked by people with very questionable backgrounds. Um, Convicted felons, felons, uh, drug users, closeted and uncloseted homosexuals. Uh, I wrote it down here. Let's see. My thing is, Manasseh Jordan is a pawn in a much bigger game. A much bigger game is here. You got people that are accusing you, Bishop Jakes, that are accused of the exact same thing you accused of doing. I don't know if you got people looking. Tell them to Google Tasha Kay's videos. One of your main accusers, accused of the exact same thing you accused of doing. In fact, worse. Much worse. Much, much worse. So that's something to think about. Something for you to think about as you talk to your legal team and get that going. Now, the right hand of the person that's attacking you, I had to get a restraining order against that person for harassment. Openly gay, criminal charges on him, prostitution in a parking lot. But well, these are the people that are making videos about you. I've never heard of you being arrested for prostitution. I've never heard of you doing any kind of drugs or uh, robocall scams and false prophecies. I've never heard of you being attached to stuff like that. But those are the people that are attacking you right now. Those are the people that are coming after you because you wouldn't either hook them up with some kind of uh, speaking engagement movie or television deal or give them money. Now all of a sudden they're coming after you. And you supposed to be walking around in a thong holding a peach cobbler. Right, right. The same people that are accusing you allegedly had someone get molested in their home, a family member. And the person that allegedly did it mysteriously turned up dead. But these are the prophetic people, the people that can prophesy things in the future that's about to happen, but they couldn't prophesy none of that. You know, they couldn't prophesy their child molestation allegations. They couldn't prophesy someone in their home getting molested and violated, but they can come after you. Something to think about. And uh, yeah, you need to have your legal team and your investigators look into that as you move forward with the, uh, I'm sure, legal action that you're going to take. It would it would behoove you to do that expeditiously, sir. Um, I'm just going to give you a little background of the person that's been making all these videos about you. This person has said that Jesus was a liar. Uh, one of these people has said that the Bible is a book of spells. This is who's accusing you. This is who's accusing you right now. And they are hypocrites because what they're accusing you of doing is the same thing that they've been accused of doing. It's something to think about, Bishop Jake. Something to think about. 
And I'm going to go into the other thing we're going to talk about later with the uh, prophetic college and how that fell apart with the uh, accusation in the lawsuit um, that was levied against uh, George Bloomer by the Word Network. All of it ties together. All of it. All of it. You just happen to be the last person that uh, fell into this um, scheme of Beelzebub. So, so to speak, <laughs> I'm I'm choosing my words. So y'all go, y'all ride with me. I'm going real slow. Normally I'm really animated, but I just wanted to look into the camera. And I want to say this to you, be encouraged. And whatever you do, do not settle out of court. Because in the court of Negro opinion and public opinion, if you do that, they're going to think you did. If you know you haven't done anything, you fight them with all your resources. So you're not like me. You're a public figure. You're an international figure. You're a wealthy man in ministry and in business. You have the resources to fight this and clear your name all the way. And I suggest you do just that. But who am I? I'm just somebody watching all this go down. I don't think you did it, but it, maybe you did. I don't know. But if you didn't do it, you owe it to yourself and to your family and everybody that has benefited from your teachings to fight this thing and take these people down that have come after you with ulterior motives. So let's go. Um, I have yet to see any proof about you something that you're supposed to do. Only thing I've seen is text messages. And ladies and gentlemen, and especially the people in the bushes, there are apps on your phone, on your computer, that you can generate fake text messages. AI software, you can put people, that, that quote unquote picture of you and a phone holding a, a, a peach cobbler, they could create that on AI. I could create a fake text message right now, making it seem like I'm personal friends with President Obama. I've never spoken to or seen President Obama, but there's software that I can go right here on my computer and generate a text message thread between him and I and make it look like we talk all the time and make it say whatever I want it to say. Please. Fight these people. Do not. Of course. Uh oh. Hold on. Do not sell out of court. And I have my special guest here. Hello, sir. Hey, Amen. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. First of all, let me put on my headset.
Can you hear me? Now I can, yes. Yeah, I can the laptop. Can the audience hear me? Okay, good. Now we're good. Now, what I was saying, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who don't know, this is Jimmy Battles. Four years ago to the day, Jimmy came to Cleveland, and I interviewed him, and he told me what happened with between him Michael Tripp, and George Bloomer. And Jimmy, uh, before I get started, I just want to uh, thank you for coming on. Wish you a happy early birthday. Thank you, sir. And I also want to say to you, again, thank you for trusting me to do your story. Absolutely. And I want to let everybody hear from you what happened and how. Just give people a quick uh, synopsis of what, what happened back in over 25 years ago. Well, you know, so first of all, uh, Feliz Año Nuevo, or Happy New Year to everyone. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I got to you because I want to set, sort of set the record straight because it was said by another blogger mm -hmm. who was unmedicated mm -hmm. that they gave you my story. Let's mm -hmm. talk about that. Mm -hmm. Nobody can give anybody my story. Uh, I chose to, um, to share with you uh, because someone pointed out, hey, this cigar blogger, blogger is sort of like, you know, He's on it. You may want to just talk to him about it. And uh, of course, everybody, some of the people heard in the beginning of the story, uh, where they heard it was uh -huh. at Larry Lies. I mean, live. No pun intended. Right. Um, and so I called in. Uh, this is me talking, not Daryl. I called his name, not Daryl. Uh, and, and talked about some events that took place in my life. And mm -hmm. it was sort of shut down because they were friends. Him and George Bloomer were friends. And, you know, I don't have a problem with people covering for someone. Mm -hmm. I have a problem when people cover up for someone. There's mm -hmm. a difference between covering for and covering up. As the church like to say, we got to cover our leaders. That is in prayer. And then call them to accountability. You don't have to go on 
uh, a public platform and call them out, but you need to call them into accountability. So to cover them means to pray for them, make sure they seek in counseling, make sure that they are being truthful with the people that they said they are leading mm -hmm. and not standing up uh, on a platform lying about what happened or didn't happen, right? Because one thing we know about the truth, if you cover the legs, the head will stick out. Right? Mm. The mm. truth is going to come out somehow or another. It may take 30 years to come out, which my story did. Um, and so I went on from there and then I went to another, I, I figured I would get some noise around it because one thing about being silent and being suppressed, your voice being suppressed, when you something got to find its way out, you'll find, you will find any avenue to try to get your voice out. And when one try to stifle your voice, you'll go another route to get your voice out. There's nothing like a person um, being silent and uh, suppressed for so long. And then the moment they try to get it out, somebody else try to come and shut them down. Right. And uh, so my voice was shut down when I wanted to confront George Bloomer. Uh, it was shut down by the then pastor. Um, they had, she had already, uh, Corbell had already uh, lined it up, said, okay, so when the service is over, I'll have somebody to come pick you up and you can confront him in front of me. Mm -hmm. And when it was time to confront him, I sat in the car until that service was over. When mm -hmm. it was time to confront him, I got a message saying, don't do it. That's the other place. That's, the, mm -hmm. that's where it began. Mm -hmm. Let me shut your voice down. I got to, you know, whether they knew how to deal with it or not, they could have said, I don't quite know how to deal with this, right? So my right. voice was shut down and it crushed me because mm -hmm. I wanted the opportunity to be able to speak to him in front of the person that said that they covered me as a leader. Um, and as, by the way, as you can tell, I'm in a much better place, right? Yeah. So, so when, when that happened, it crushed me. It really did. It crushed me because I thought that I was going to get the opportunity to confront him in front of my then leader who mm -hmm. despised me to this day. So my voice was shut down. So when I came on to the first blogger, and they said themselves, this boy got to get his story out. This man got to get his story out. He's been shut down and voice been silenced. And this is what he told his mentor. His voice has been silenced. And I got to be able, I have to do his story. Mm -hmm. And then he tried to shut me down mm -hmm. because it all panned out, right? right. Uh, you can call me a lot of things, but you'll never be able to truthfully call me a liar. Mm. Never. Never, ever. I was even telling the truth, whether it's an ugly truth, a pretty truth, or if it's the truth on me, I've mm -hmm. been, been truthful because at some point, this thing is all lopsided because I broke my headset. At Don't, some worry point, about it. Don't worry about the it. The truth is going to come out regardless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when he shut me down uh, by way of saying, well, you need to come on the show with him, mm -hmm. there's no way I was going to come on the show with my violator for the first time in all of these years for him to lie because it would cause so much rage in me because at this point, if we get face to face and you lie, and no telling what would have happened at that point. As I said to George before in a conversation, I'm not that little boy anymore. Right. Uh, so then they conjured up, they tried to find a way to shut me down. Uh, now, allegedly, he was uh, that blogger was paid off to shut my story down because right. it was just too much for them to lose. Or it was just as a friend, you you if you say your friend is somebody and you're doing a story on them, uh, then it sort of compromises the friendship. Now I know right. what it's going to I know what is going to be said, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna get into that as well. Mm -hmm. It would be said, well, I did a story on my mentor son. And that had, you know, I didn't care. That was my mentor's son. Well, the mentor's son and the mentor didn't have a good relationship. And I know that for a fact. Mm -hmm. the, the, the mentor was against the son because they could not control the son financially, 
I was sitting in the car when Manessa called Fargo. I was there. I'm not telling you what I heard. I was there when he called and said, my father is dark. He is evil. I had people to sow seeds and I didn't have an account. And I asked my father, could I use the, the, his account or the church's account? And he said, yes. And then the moment he couldn't control his son, then he drained the account. I was sitting in the back seat of that Bentley in Houston, Texas, when the phone call came through. So you gotta be careful because you don't know who I know or who people know, right? Right. So I sat there in that back seat and I heard him direct him saying, listen, I'm going to direct you to my, the person that sets up account, Hagler in Chicago. <laughs> Listen, I am going to tell the truth all the way. Hagler, Bishop Hagler is going to set up your account. That boy talked about his father and talked about how dark and evil he was to drain that account. When he couldn't control his son, he drained the account so that Manasseh couldn't have access to the account. Call me Manasseh, you know I'm telling the truth. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so, um, so calling, uh, so anyways, so all of that. So if a blogger said, well, I did a, uh, I did a show about my mentor son. And so I'll do it about anybody. That's not true because the mentor son and the mentor didn't have a good relationship. They broke off, went separate ways. So the mentor said, and for years said that this is another truth that Hargo was at the helm of their, of, of their relationship breaking up. It's not true because I was there. Hargo begged Manasseh to have a relationship with his father, begged him, please have a relationship with father. I don't want you to think your father, I don't want your father to think that I am, uh, uh, that I'm breaking up. No, 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 that they broke up because the daddy could not control the son. And so what they do, they drain you, they take the money, you won't have access. So Bishop Hagler set up Manasseh's account. Oh wow. Let's go from there. So so when you so I know they're gonna say, Oh, I did it, I spoke, uh, you know, my 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 mentor son, I talked about him. No, but that's the reason why you talked about him, because the mentor, your mentor didn't have a good relationship with his own son. And so they were plotting to expose the son. Mm -hmm. I won't go into details. Yeah, yeah. The details. I know the details. I just don't mm -hmm. talk about it, right? Mm -hmm. I don't talk about everything that I know. I talk about the things that I need to talk about until it's time to talk about what I do. Right. So anyways, so that relationship, so with that blogger, um, they, they, they decided that they weren't going to do the story. And they brought up a lie saying, oh, I ain't got no evidence. Um, right. Bloomer, Bloomer said he didn't do it. But when you listen to the audio, you played it. I got it. I still got audio that has not been played. Yeah. And so he said. Over 10 yeah. hours, right? Yeah. He said, yes. He said, oh, Bloomer said he's not guilty. He didn't do that. Mm -hmm. He said that forever. Right. And then he said. It's it's a recording. He said it. He said, but when I sent him your picture, everything changed. Because he remembered you. So if everybody, if anybody listened to the audio of me and George Bloomer, he said, when Larry reached out to him, he was like, I did nothing like that. He said, but when Larry sent me your picture, he said, boom, almost immediately. I remember you. I remember the situation. Let's have a conversation. So for what's his name for the other blogger to say, oh, I didn't do his story because it didn't line up. But you already said that George had already remembered me and he already knew he, he had already admitted to knowing me and knowing the situation. And he wanted to have a conversation with me, mm. but he wanted to have a conversation with me alone. Right. Mm -hmm. He wanted to fly in somewhere. At that time, I was in the New York area or Jersey area. He wanted to fly in and meet me alone. And I said, no, I'm not meeting my predecessor, the person that violated me for the first time alone. 
And even in the conversation on the audio, you hear George Bloomer saying, what did you think when I, when you, when, when you heard that I wanted to meet with you? I said, well, first of all, I wasn't going to show up alone. I wasn't going to show up without my gun. That's number one. I don't and blame. Then he, so, he sort of laughed. I said, well, you got to remember, I'm not that little boy anymore. See, mm -hmm. People only remember that little child that they violated. I'm not mm -hmm. that child anymore. Right. Mm -mm. I'm a full grown adult. Uh, I won't disclose my age now, but I'll disclose it tomorrow. My I, I, my birthday is tomorrow. I always looked younger than what I was and by the grace of God. And so I sort of like matriculated through that blogger. And then when they tried to shut it down and then they told me that I should connect back with George Boomer to get a book deal. Why would I do that? Why would anybody in their right mind advise someone to reconnect with their violator to get a deal? That sounds psychotic to me. That's really psychotic. For me to connect back with, he said, well, you're not going to get a, you're not, anybody going to buy your books. You need to hook up with George. I'm not, that's, and if you listen to the audio, I said, I'm not doing that. You're crazy, man. You do have I'm recordings, gonna, right? You released the recording. Oh my God, I have the recordings. You and have we, the and, recordings. And, and we played them. We played some you of them. You played them. You played some of them. Now, here is the kicker. He said, well, I'll let you and George come on my show. I wasn't doing that. I, I just was not going to do that. I didn't know how that was going to turn out. I needed to feel like I was in a safe place. And that was not a safe space for me to come mm -hmm. on a public platform for the first time to meet with my violator someone who crossed lines, someone who violated me, and to meet them on their friend's space, on their friend's platform. And then I don't know how it would have turned out. So anyways, when George, <coughs> when George uh, was talking to me on the audio, now, by the way, let me just say this. Let me go back. I had no idea the call was being recorded. Mm. No idea idea whatsoever. I knew I had an app on my phone, but that was for my job because I had a union. I was a part of a job. I was at a job that had a union and the, the company would lie, right? So mm -hmm. I needed to cover myself. The mm -hmm. company would lie. And so if you got no proof and they go to the union, mm -hmm. you know, you're done. So I wanted to cover myself. So when I answered when they called me, I answered the phone saying, hi, this is Jimmy. We're on a recorded line. Because they was recording, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't say you're on a recorded line. See, they didn't know I was recording. I just had to say you're on a recorded line. They didn't know whether I was talking about their line or my line. Because there were times that they lied and said, oh, they lost the recording. I, didn't, I always wanted to cover me because nobody else will. Right. I learned that as a youngin when I was violated uh, from the parishion, you know, from people of has titles. So mm -hmm. you got to now violate yourself. During that time, there were no recorders. There was, I, there was no cell phones during that time. I don't ever remember a cell phone during that time when that happened. Mm -hmm. Well, I happened to be talking to someone mm -hmm. uh, because. Uh, what's his name said to me? The blogger said to me, well, George want to call you. He want to talk to you. I said, okay, he can have my number. Give me his number. We can have a conversation. So when I got, when I got, so I was on the phone, right? With someone else. Mm -hmm. When he called in, I had to click over. Mm -hmm. So, so when I clicked over, I wasn't thinking about anything. I just needed to have this conversation to take this pressure off up off of me, something okay. I've been holding for years. So when we had the conversation and y'all heard it, I've not been able to listen to it. Yeah. I've not been able to watch the video, the, uh, the our interview. I haven't been able to listen to that conversation between me and George. It's too traumatizing. It was just, and still to this day, I have not been able to listen to it. I, I know what was said because it was me there having the mm. conversation. Right. So after that conversation was over, I thought to myself, I said, wow, I forgot I have a recorder. Because it will automatically record unless I set it in the settings to only record when I press 
you know, when I pressed for it to record. Right. And I went to look back in the record. I said, man, because, you know, the first blogger said, you ain't got no evidence and da 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 I need evidence, even though mm-hmm. he had it from mm-hmm. word of mouth, right? Right. But I ain't got no evidence, ain't got no evidence. So I went to look back at the recorder to see if the, the number recorded, if I could see the number on the recording because it comes up as the number. I didn't mm-hmm. see it. I said, oh, God, I don't have, you know, obviously it didn't record. It's nothing I tried to do. I said, it didn't record. I remembered I had the recording for my job. And then I started listening and realized I was on another call when he called me. And I clicked over. And when I clicked that button on that, when I clicked that number to listen to the recorder, I heard that conversation. Then I said, oh, I got to go. This is George calling me. I clicked Mm -hmm. over. And that's the recorder had been going all along. Mm -hmm. had no idea. So it wasn't a setup. But thank God that was my way of having proof. Mm -hmm. Because that's all they said. You ain't got no proof. You know, he said he didn't do it. You say he did it, even though behind closed doors, they said, oh, he remembered when he saw your picture. And he, right. that's the first thing he said. When I saw your picture, he said almost immediately, he said, bam, almost immediately, mm-hmm. I remember the situation. Let's have a conversation. Mm-hmm. He said, you, you're older. You're a little older. See, he doesn't, he didn't know my age. He said, you're a little older, but you still look the same. Mm. And that's when the conversation was had. Now, if he, so, if he claiming something didn't happen, but he wants to have a conversation because he remembers you, what does he remember? That's my question. See, mm. critical thinkers would say, well, what does he remember? Because mm-hmm. right? he immediately wanted, wanted to talk to you, right? Oh, absolutely. He wanted to talk to me. He wanted to have a conversation, but he wanted to fly in, according to the first blogger. He mm-hmm. wanted to fly in and talk to me one-on-one. I wasn't doing that. I mean, I'm too old of a cat to be screwed by a kitten. Mm. Mm. I'm not that little, I wasn't that little boy anymore where I was naive and believe what a leader said. I had gained some experiences. It wasn't Mm -hmm. good experiences, but I have my own experiences. And so in the conversation, if you remember in the conversation, Mm -hmm. he said, I took something from you. Yes, he did. He did say that because I got the audio. I was, said I decided not to play it tonight because I didn't want to upset you. I didn't want to open old wounds. Re-traumatizing. I, I can't. Yeah, I, I, I don't even want. I didn't want to do that, but he did say that. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, he said. I feel like I took something from you. And the thing was, I said I believed in him because I was a young boy, stupefied, brainwashed in the church. Mm-hmm. Uh, which they'll never get me to that point again because there's a lot of brainwashed people now still in the church as adults. I was brainwashed as a child. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. People are still brainwashed. They can see it, but they don't believe what they see or they cover up for. It. See, and th- what, what I've noticed is that the Christians, Christians, mm-hmm. well, let me not say that, church people. Mm-hmm. Church a big, people, big difference. Big difference. Yeah, church people will. Oh, one second. I'll call you back. Okay. Uh, uh, it's scrubbing me. It's scrubbing me. I'll call you back. I'm on the phone. I'm on the call. Yes. I don't know why people keep calling when you keep sending them to voicemail. Stop yeah. calling me. <laughs> so, it. what was I saying? Lord. You were talking about. Um... Uh, church so you people. said you so yeah so church folks will always protect for some reason mm-hmm. they always seem to always protect the violate mm-hmm. and they dismiss and 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 they dismiss the the victims mm-hmm. not unless it's somebody they like because people don't really support what's right they support who they like all the time brother. <laughs> All the yeah. time. Uh, they support who they like. They don't support what, what is right, right? Mm-hmm. So even in this conversation, and I can talk about it without tears today. Before y'all, the last time y'all saw me having this conversation, yeah, I yeah. cannot bear, I cannot bear <laughs> these burdens alone. Mm. 
in my distress he promised to help, help me. Mm. I won't count Jesus, Jesus alone. And I've had I've had my private moments, right? I've had my moments where I cried. I cried in it, but I didn't die in it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I didn't die in it. But what I learned about church people that's been brainwashed, mm -hmm. regardless of what their leader do, they're gonna always protect that leader mm -hmm. until it happens to someone that they love. In their house. In their house. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, and sir. I also found out through the years of living throughout the throughout life that most of the people that are constantly bashing something, they're really bashing the thing that's in them. Mm. They they're, they're trying to feel good about bashing what's in them, right? Mm. To mm. oh, I, I'm to I, I don't know. It's some psychological picture that they have. Mm -hmm. So so. I ended up, after going to another blogger, I knew I wasn't going to disclose everything that I had to this blogger because I just knew they weren't matured enough. Mm -hmm. I've watched them psychotically. They, knew, they just weren't mature enough to handle the sensitive information that I had. Mm -hmm. And when I told them I had this information, and I did, they said, send me everything you got. Send me every, I want it. Send me everything you got. Well, I remember being in New York. I was going to the grocery store when I had this conversation, but I dropped my phone so many times. It had cracked. It just, I couldn't touch. I couldn't get to anything. And actually, I was going to sprint for them to replace my screen so I could mm -hmm. get to the stuff in my phone. And I honestly said to them, I don't have access to it. My phone is broken. But I didn't never share with them after it was fixed. Because I knew by watching them, because I watch patterns, by watching them, I was not going to give them that sensitive information. Mm -hmm. And when I did not give them that, mm -hmm. they were okay until you had it. When they found, because to them, it looked like I might have, to them, he lied. He just didn't want to give it to me. No, I told the truth at that moment, right? Mm -hmm. I told that truth. That my screen really was broken and I couldn't get to it, but I knew I was going to get it fixed. But what I did know was I knew that person could not handle, they could not carefully handle the sensitive uh, information that I had. And I just did not want it all over the place. And so I didn't share it with them. You didn't want and your they, story to be weaponized. I did not want it to be weaponized, but they were okay until you came out with the recordings and all of a sudden, you got they, called every kind of name in the book, Jimmy oh, Crack Corn. Jimmy Crack Corn, and, and, and they uh, said whatever they want because they began to revict, try to, what do you call it, victim shame me? Yeah. I, I wasn't ashamed because I knew where it was coming from. Uh -huh. I mean, if you was in your balanced right mind, then I might be like, oh, wow. But when I saw the Helter Skelter, Mm -hmm. Off-centeredness of the psyche. I mm -hmm. knew something was wrong, and I said, "You know what? Hey, mm -hmm. they brought the noise around it. Let me give it to because I called you and I said, hey, I yeah. need to talk to you.' But you tried to do it. The, you did it. You tried to do things right by letting them know that mm -hmm. he was going to do the story, right? I but sure did. Yeah, they lied and said they gave you the story. You tell them I can give you my story, brother. Listen, uh, I'm in a better place now. You let them come for me, but please don't come for me if I didn't send for you. Yeah, don't come right, because I can come harder. <laughs> mm. Oh yeah, that, that ain't what you want. I mean, I'm not. I'm not that person I was four years ago. I mean, I'm that person, but I'm a healed version of that person. Thank God. I'm not, yeah, I'm not. I'm not the uh, weak uh, or traumatized. I'm, you know, it's still traumatic. Um, I decided this year I'm going to go back to see to get my counselor to go back to counseling. I have a lot of things going on. Mother's death. This this is not over. Uh -huh. Right. This is not over. 
And so this is how my story ended up because I got tired of the riffraff. I said, and I called you. I said, hey, man, I got it. I just gave you everything. I said, here we go. Mm -hmm. And let's just go from there. Yeah. And that's how you ended up with my story. And people were really blessed by, and they were, uh, I've gotten calls. I've gotten inboxes. Uh, a lot of people was made free. Uh, yes. Or, or they were free to speak up. Mm -hmm. um, I've had people tell me I was victimized by the same person in New York. So this has not been a one time, two time, three time event. This has been an ongoing situation. Mm -hmm. And you got to rectify that. Well, remember the conversation. Mm -hmm. He said to me when Archb his, our, the Archbishop Jordan said that, you know, we got to rectify some things that was done in the past. He said he was the first one hollering out, amen, amen. But he had no idea it was going to be him. He said it on the on that conversation. He said, "Here I am, just the first one." Yeah, 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 yeah. Had no idea it was going to be him that was going to be called out. Mm -hmm. And it's just I I wasn't trying to call anybody out to embarrass them. I needed my story to be told because it was killing me to hold it. Yeah, I need you to tell one little piece here. In the in those recordings, for those who don't know, there was a conversation where you were asked, "What did you want?" as if they were trying to offer you money. Yeah. And your reply shut the whole conversation down. You could hear a rat licking cotton. They you can hear a rat piss yes. on cotton. That's right. Because they yeah. asked they me. said They asked me, what did I want? Mm -hmm. And my response was, I just want my voice to be heard. Say that again for the people in the back. My response was when they asked me, well, what is it that you want? Because they had their fix it person on the line mm -hmm. to fix their stuff, right? Well, tell me this, what is it that you want? I said, I just want my voice to be heard. That was it. No money, no, no payoff, no bribe, no hush money. You can't bribe me with something that I already have. <laughs> Exactly. So, see, people get manipulated by stuff that they, they that they don't have, right? And I'm not boasting. I mean, listen, I'm in a good space of my life, and 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 um, I'm not in the bed. Like I'm not, you know. But mm -hmm. I'm just. I love being where I am. I live in Colombia, right? Mm -hmm. And so. <laughs> No payoff from the Word Network. No payoff from George Bloomer. No payoff from Bernard Jordan. No payoff from nobody, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I could live really nicely if they paid me off, but that is not what I wanted. Mm -hmm. I knew that when my voice went out, it would reverberate. Yes, it, it did. It would go out and other people were here. Now, what I do know, uh, 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 Daryl, is there were people who wanted to shut my voice down mm -hmm. because they feared that their victims would hear my voice and, and get gain ability and get in get courage and come forth because I had people to say to me, "You have given me strength to mm. talk about my story." Mm. As a matter of fact, somebody hit me up because they said. They knew someone who was the pastor's armor bearer. And the pastor would constantly come to the family outings and eatings. And that boy did not know how to deal with that. He finally went to the police after hearing my story. Mm. See, because your voice, it, it mobilizes. It gives you strength. It gives other victims strength to say, if he has the strength and courage to tell his story, because there's still some people who are afraid. I've had people mm -hmm. hit me up. I had somebody hit me up and say, I'm not ready to go through what you went through. Mm -hmm. I want to tell it. You were attacked. Oh, listen, but the church prepared me for attacks. All I've ever experienced in the church is attack. So I didn't care at that point. I didn't care mm -hmm. about the attacks. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get this out of me so that I could live because that mm -hmm. was the thing that was killing me. The mm -hmm. attacks can never kill me. It's mm -hmm. the stuff that I was holding and suppressing was the thing that was de devouring me and eating me up on the inside that I couldn't function in, day in my daily life. I was constantly, I constantly, from, a, from that point, 
up until mm -hmm. we talked, I constantly struggled with that and battled with what was done to me. And I couldn't, I was still trying to protect somebody else's image, but I was being, I, I was being destroyed inwardly. And I decided because I got tired of that then pastor still talking about me, wrapping her lips around my name. And the same tongue that tried to destroy me is connected to the same hand that didn't protect me. Mm. Jimmy, you were able to not get completely taken out by this. Unfortunately, Michael Tripp wasn't. Yeah. When I remember and, the day I was sitting in my in the room at my mother's house uh -huh. and I wanted to overdose on these pills. Mm. But I thought about how it would have hurt my mother mm -hmm. and the people that loved me. And they would not have known why I did it. I thought mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. and, and I just wish that we could have helped Michael Tripp as well. Get his voice Michael, heard. Yeah, Michael, he went. I've spoken with his mother. His mother, I mean, mm -hmm. I, mean I should hopefully be finished my book this year. He, she told me she wanted to. She want a book. She want the, a copy. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've spoken with uh, his, uh, his mother, and um, she was hurt. Mm -hmm. She was really hurt. When's the last time you spoke with her? It's been a while, but she was hurt. And when he died, someone directed her to me because they knew the story. They said, you need to talk to Battles mm -hmm. because he's got a story he could tell you. Mm. When I started naming these people mm. and told what happened, to so both she of you, was, yeah, she was really distraught because she, she had no idea. No, but the ones that went through catastrophic or traumatic experiences in that church, mm. our parents didn't even go to that church. Our parents trusted us. They didn't go to church. Our parents trusted us, trusted their children to the church, and the church failed. They're still failing. You know how they're failing? They know things are going on, but they won't talk about it. They are loud about things that don't matter, but they keep their mouth closed about things that does matter. Mm. And now, it's unfortunate. I got something that came to me this week. And it came to me early in the morning because I was, you know, you know what I went through with all of this and other things. Oh, yeah. And I was so frustrated. I said, God, why did I go through this? And why? Um, I felt like I didn't have no closure. I was getting discouraged this week. And I woke up that morning and there was a message. Daryl, did you know about this? And it was a link to a lawsuit. The Word Network suing George Bloomer. And I and the first person I didn't even after I read it, the first person that I contacted was you. Wow. And you read it, and I read it, and I'm like, this can't be happening. And then later on that day, you told me, you said, Daryl, do you realize what today is? I said, No, you said it's the fourth anniversary of when I interviewed you about this whole situation. Yes. To the day, four yes. years to the day. Yes. And yes. it just blew me away. And then I'm reading the document. And then I read the document. And inside the document, originally, George Bloomer sued the word work saying that they were racist and blah, 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 and all this other stuff. But in their suit against him, they mentioned. You're breaking up. You're breaking up. And your okay. video is slowing down. Hold on. Hold on one second. I want the people to hear this. Is it better? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, so what oh, happened? You're still frozen, but I can hear your voice. Okay, there you go. So what happened? Uh, in the document where they sued George Bloomer, the Word Network said that he committed fraud because they saw our videos, the interviews that I did with you, and the audio. They heard the audio. Yes. They heard everything, and they said that he failed to disclose the fact that he had assaulted two underage boys, and he hit And we're not them. the only ones. Right. 
he admitted the drug use. He admitted going to prison, but he did not admit the allegations that were made against him. And the Word Network said that they would have never hired him if they had known this information because he was speaking in crowds before children and they couldn't have that liability of having him in front of children. Yes. So they're suing him for everything. And, and they the, the fact, their reasoning for that is the interview that you did with me. Yeah. And they said they heard the audios that where he's admitting to somewhat admitting to mm -hmm. the, the allegations because he said the moment I saw your pictures, I immediately, almost immediately, remember the situation. Let's have a conversation. And he sort of pandered around it. Later on, he kept vacillating between. But then if you notice in the conversation, he said, man, oh, I wish, I wish I could give you something. It's, um, it's the same as, what do you want? Mm -hmm. They're just in a softer way. Yeah, I don't bite baits. Um, I'm not, you know, it is what it is. It happened. Uh, if you notice, he didn't fight it. It was that blogger that was trying to cover up. But that was his job, because once you receive money, allegedly, once you receive money, you have to do your job. Mm -hmm. like, I've never heard of George Bloomer trying to deny the facts, he never came on to try to say anything. And you heard his voice very clear Yeah, on the audience. So you can, how can you deny that? Because you were told, get over it. It yeah. was a one-time thing. It was a one offer. Go heal. Uh, oh, and you and, mad because he forgot about you. What, what right. Is it to remember? You didn't uh, forget me because you saw Go heal. Picture. Develop a relationship with him. That's what I do with all of my accusers. Remember when That's that what he said. said. And if you remember, oh, I don't know if you played that. No, you didn't. I still got it. I almost mm -hmm. played it. I may still play it. You remember when Tasha K came out with that interview with that young man that that mm -hmm. blogger violated? Mm -hmm. The same year, whatever that year was, I got it on audio. He said, I went through a dark, a, uh, he called the darkness of the soul or something. And mm -hmm. whatever that year was. Mm -hmm. That's what he was talking about. Wow. wow. I, the date, the year matched up. He said that was that year that he went through what he called the darkness of the soul or something. Mm -hmm. I still got that. I, I got all the audios, of course. Mm -hmm. So I'll pull them out of my arsenal when I need to. You try to come back what I said, and then I'm going to let your voice play. Mm -hmm. Let let the people hear you in your own words say, but but foolish people will still deny it, mm -hmm. even though you they're got like, their voice talking to they're you. Like, they're like these deceived, deranged Trumpsters mm. <laughs> that can see what you're doing, but you're you're so you because you're caught up in an occultism, you don't. You see it, but you can't admit to it. Mm -hmm. Cognitive it dissonance. That's what it's called. Mm -hmm. Cognitive dissonance. Cog yes. And so I just believe that everything happens for a reason. And I was mm -hmm. able to stand in adversity. I was able to stand in quicksand amongst a lot of hyenas mm. and still survived. Mm. And still surviving. And it didn't destroy me. Now, unfortunately, Michael. Yeah. Is another case. He's another case. And unfortunately, he's not here to speak. And I'm mm. here to speak on his behalf because I, before he died, uh, he reached back out to me and we had a conversation about that time. Mm. Right. And um, so, you know, be that it may, I believe in the law of reciprocity, the karma, as we can call it. Mm -hmm. Law reciprocity. What is here? Nothing. All the stones will be unturned. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm I'm very um, clear about what I've experienced. I've never been a person to try to conjure up anything because I don't like trying to remember anything. Uh, not a lie. Mm -hmm. I just have never. You might call me a lot of things, but you can't call me a liar. 
and mm. I am going to remember verbatim. I remember to this day because George was a huge man during that time. Yeah, that was before a, he had the weight loss surgery. Yeah. Yeah, he was a heavy, heavy set guy. And um, and some would try to say, oh, well, he was on drugs. Well, why didn't the Christians and the pastors and the leaders God didn't tell them that you were inviting a drug addict into your to do a revival? God talked to you about everything else. Why he didn't tell you that? Mm. See, that's my question to the people. If you're so spirit led, what by what spirit? Oh, well, the Lord spoke to me. Well, who? Your landlord? Because <laughs> it wasn't the Lord of Lords. <laughs> and you ain't paying your landlord. So how you gonna hear from me? Oh, the Lord spoke to me. You, I did that to, uh, what's the man name on 700 Club? Um, Pat Robinson. Pat Robinson, I called him. I called his office. During hmm. the time that he was saying that God told him, the Lord told him, that Mitt Romney was going to win the presidency and beat Obama, and it was going to be by landslide. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, nah, that ain't what I heard. But anyways, when it didn't happen, I called the office. Mm -hmm. I called his office. I said, I need to speak with Brother Pat Robinson, please. That's me. I'm bald, right? I said, I need to speak with Brother Pat Robinson. She said, well, he's not available. Would you like to leave a message? I said, I really need to speak to him. I said, because we all saw on uh, the the uh, on his on I think he was on TBN with uh, Benny Hinn, the one that named Manasseh. Benny oh, Hinn, he did. He gave him the Benny, name. Benny Hinn publicly said that he named Manasseh. Yeah. Oh. Oh wow. Yeah, and so uh, he was on the Benny Hinn show, and when he said um, he was that Mitt Romney was going to win the presidency by the land by landslide, and all he wanted was a seat, right? To right. be sitting amongst them. And mm -hmm. so I'm just, just sharing with you the boldness, right? So I mm -hmm. called him when the secretary answered, whoever she was, you could tell she was a black lady. Mm -hmm. She said, well, he's not available. I said, I really need to speak with him. I said, because this man got on public TV, television and said, the Lord told him that Mitt Romney was going to win the presidency. And I said, and as of today, President Obama is the president. I said, now we know God is not some type of skin, uh, uh, schizophrenic or phrenic schizo it i said i just need to know what lord told him was it his landlord because it could not have been the lord of lords <laughs> <laughs> i said it could not have been the lord of lords because god don't lie the lord mm -hmm. doesn't lie sure and don't. she said and she responded well you know whatever but anyways been the end uh, was the one that said he named Manasseh. And mm. when Manasseh, I'm going to share this, and I, will, I might better stop. When uh, when Manasseh was going to Benny Hinn, mm -hmm. uh, he asked Manasseh, he said, now, I knew what house you grew up in. I was the one that named you. Now, this is what Benny Hinn said on a platform. He said, and you didn't get this gift from your father. This was when Manasseh was calling out names and addresses. And, and, but he got that from Joseph Hargo, Prophet Joseph Hargo, mm -hmm. because he was working with Hargo at the time. When I had to Google him, by the way. Oh, I yeah. didn't know who he was. I'm a heathen. Oh, yeah. yeah. Prophet, uh, Prophet uh, Joseph Hargo. And, and so uh, Hargo had already told Manasseh that. When they ask him, don't call his name. Because this is what Hargo told me. Because he didn't want it out, right? Mm -hmm. And so he, but Benny Hinn said to him, I know you. I named you. I know you grew up in your father's house. But this gift right here is not from your father's house. Mm -hmm. He said, where did you get it from? And Manasseh gave a clear answer, which is, a, he said, well, same place that you get the gift of healing from. But we do know that, I don't want to get into that, but we do know that these things can be taught because it's mm -hmm. a craft. Uh, mm -hmm. Teach people to sit, meditate, and see in a certain realm or what have you. Um, but this is where you got it from. And that's where the, you know, where Jordan said that, you know, that uh, Hargo was at the helm of him and his son's relationship, with, you know, being destroyed, but that's not the case because I was there when that man begged. I was there. I, I was there when I was said, I begged Manasseh to have a relationship with his father. Mm. 
And so that's bits and pieces that y'all don't know, but people that know, they know. Uh-huh. I know our girl is dead, died of prostate cancer. Mm. But that's who he was, that's who Manasseh was working with at mm. the time. So all this other stuff, them trying to claim to come back together and we're going to attack Bishop Jakes. Y'all better go follow. Y'all better go find somebody else to mess with. Don't mess with Jakes. Mm. So let me ask you something. Now that the word network is stated emphatically in writing. I wish they would come and reach out to me. That's what I, that's what I was leading up to. That's what I was leading up to. If they reach out to you, would you tell them? You tell them about it. <laughs> just like I was, just like I was willing to take a lie detector to yes. prove that you were telling the truth. To prove that my story is the truth, nothing but the truth. So help me God. Please call me. Work network. Listen. Reach out to Daryl. Daryl will give you my information. Matter of fact, go to my email, Jimmy at JimmyBattles.com. That is J I M M Y at symbol. J I M M Y B as in boy, A T as in Tom, T as in Tom, L as in Larry, E as in Edward, S. Don't don't miss that S because you might gonna get to me. At is this Jimmy at JimmyBattles.com. Please and reach out I'll, to me. Call I'll us. be there. Just call my name. I'll be there. <laughs> I'll be right there with you with my hard drive. With my hands lifted up. And my mouth filled with praise. Because you know he filled it with something else. But it wasn't really filled. With the heart of thanksgiving. Oh. I will bless thee, oh Lord, and I will tell my story. In open court. Listen, brother, you were the blessing to my deliverance. You were the the vehicle to my being able to talk about it. Yeah. I'm glad you trusted me. And I didn't care about the backlash. I trusted you. And you know what I enjoyed about you the most? When you called me and said, I need to know how not to re-injure you. You yeah. said that to me. I'll never forget it. I need to know because you wanted to know how to tell my story without being injurious. Yeah, because right? I did not want to hurt you. And I didn't want to traumatize Dude. you. And I wanted that it to be. What, that's what I respect the most, brother. Because um, I don't know what I would have done had you you know, did what the other bloggers did. But see, they couldn't make any money from it. Any, you know, they could no longer make any money from it. So mm-hmm. they had to just, they had to lie and say, oh, for the integrity of my platform. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no integrity there. We saw it come out. These same people that's bashing and carrying on about other people, this story has already come out. Exactly. I don't know why they still, I don't know why, they still why would you go after Bishop Jake's? When somebody has already came after you mm. with proof, mm. with a victim, yeah. So you keep talking and, and a police people. report. Listen, and you keep talking and coming after people. More stuff is going to come out. That's just a law. It's a law, brother. It's a law. The more you try to expose someone, we sit with Wendy Williams because they want to be the way you, Wendy Williams of the church. We see the both people that tried to be the Wendy, Wendy Williams. Mm. Uh, the one that I won't even call his name because I don't believe in necromancing. You know, mm. I don't believe in necromancing. Necromancing is talking to the dead and trying to re- re- resurrect dead platforms. That boy platform is dead over there. I'm not talking. That's why when you call me, tell me, whoa, what's his name? Wanted to he know you and all that's involved and he want to talk to you. Had he reached out to you? I said, no, I'm not interested in necromancing, dealing mm-hmm. with the dead, dead voices, dead platforms, dead things, dead situations. Mm-hmm. I'm not interested in that. Uh-huh. I spoke to you, you shared my story, and that was it. And I've been good, honestly. So all these people that's trying to go after somebody that they've already been accused. Listen, when you know you're sleeping with dogs, you're going to wake up with fleas, and sooner or later you're going to have puppies. 
Mm. <laughs> Listen, stop trying to go after people because you're trying to deflect, right? We already know your deal. I mean, Ray Charles could see that and Stephen would never have to wonder. Yeah. <laughs> Ray Charles can see it, and Steven don't have to wonder about a person, you know. So it is what it is, brother. Yes, sir. But if the net word network call me, hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Call me if you need someone to talk to. Call me, satisfaction guarantee. Call me. Just call my name, and I'll be there. Oh, Let's get churchy. I'll be there. Just call my name. Just call my name. And I'll be there. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> Man, I'm glad. That you're in a better space, brother. I'm so oh, glad because yeah. uh, I didn't realize it had been four years until you, you told. Know. Four years, brother. I'll never forget. I went to um, Aruba. You sure did. Yeah, and then that other side over there lied and said, "Oh yeah, see, he traveling all over the place." The Word Network and Payton, they had no idea I worked for the airlines. Uh huh. <laughs> they had no idea that I was working for the airline and a realtor mm -hmm. simultaneously. <laughs> so the lie they told, oh yeah, see how he's traveling? He's in Aruba. He's in here. He's Somebody there. paid him off. <laughs> Somebody paid him off. I was flying for free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One thing about it, people can tell lies, bake flies, and fan a bunch of flies. Let me tell you, a lie will always be uncovered. Always. It cannot stay hidden. It's mm. going to come out one way or the other. It's and it out. sure has. Come but I need the Word Network to contact me. Yes, Lord. Mr. Yeah. Adele. Oh, remember when I was accused of being hired by Mr. Adele to discredit Bloomer? They said, they yeah. put it out there that I was hired by Adele, a billionaire. And here I am with less than 5,000 followers. And I was at the time, and I was accused of being hired by Mr. Adele, who owns all of that stuff, to discredit George Bloomer because him and Bloomer were going back and forth because Bloomer was on his way out at the Word Network. And they had Let me tell you about a liar, a liar college lie. thing. Yeah. yeah, but they had this prophetic college thing waiting in the wings and went, when, when you told your story, that whole prophetic college thing fell by the wayside. Pathetic college. There was nothing prophetic about it. Because they mm. fell out the synagogue about it, about the name of it. And they changed the name. I remember all of that. Mm. And now he got a lawsuit. And he got a lawsuit with somebody. Listen, these people, I wish they would try me. You better try Jesus. Uh, but don't try me. Try Jesus. Don't try me. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> brother, because <laughs> I sure bet you do. That's right. <laughs> listen, with the audio. So, yes, they they a liar will lie. That's what they do, brother. Mm -hmm. A liar gonna lie, and they're gonna rehearse a lie. They're doctor up something. You remember how they tried to doctor up an audio or something of you? They mm -hmm. stood up and tried to cut and split. The only mm -hmm. split they were doing was in the bedroom with their mentor. But anyway, ah! uh, <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> oh, I'm here for it tonight. Yeah, we've been through I mean, it. This is we've been through it. I'm, really, I'm here for it. And lie is a lie, brother. And don't be discouraged because people follow lies. People like to. They like to be deceived. They have itching ears. They like to be lied to. Mm -hmm. When they flap their lips, as long as they got teeth, tongue, and gums, people are going to lie, and they're going to talk. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that. You went through. My story is what caused you so much uh, um, 
um, um, conflict. Mm, because you remember, somewhat, well, cause, somewhat. Because you remember, you was the in insignificant blogger. Yeah, that's remember? what I was called. Yeah, among you other were the things, insignificant the, blogger, the elderly, but the when, insignificant blogger, all that. Yeah, yeah. But when your voice, when your, when you played all those voice calls, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, the church really showed you who they were. Church people were the ones attacking me, not street people, were, people in the listen, church. They were the one who uh, crucified Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> they weren't church Christians. Folks. Yeah. They were church people. Yeah. And these people talking about, oh, they, they are, they trying to expose. No, 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 no. Listen, it's church folks. Look at who, look who I was traumatized by. Church folks. Church people. Look who's going to talk after this video is people to see it. I wish they would. Look, look at who's going to talk then. Church mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. The death threats I got, the, the harassment, the prayers, the hoping that my daddy would die and, and my dog would die and, and everything. They almost, they was about to drink bleach and care yeah. all. Yeah, rocking and, back and forth, <laughs> all that. All that. Church folks sent after me. And church people need counseling and they need medication. Especially those that came from the Pentecostal church. Mm. Anybody that has come from the Pentecostal movement, you need counseling because you've been traumatized in some way. It was the Pentecostal preacher that traumatized me. Mm. Pentecostal. Mm. Taking penis at any cost. Dang. Dang. That's a heck of a way to... <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. It's the truth, and it's this been this type of damning things going on for centuries. And they try to put it on the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. but it's been going on in the Pentecostal Church, the Christian Church, mm -hmm. and it is all about don't say nothing. Let's not talk about it. Then if you don't talk about it, it'll go away. I didn't talk about it. It didn't go away, but it almost killed me because I didn't talk about it. And mm -hmm. now today, because of that. Extremely vocal. The real me stood up. I'm very verbal, very vocal, excuse me, very vocal about things. And I'll tell on me. Mm -hmm. So that'll pull the power of that'll pull the power away from those who want to try who want to try to embarrass me. I'll tell on me. Right. But I right. can tell you this. I was traumatized. And sometimes I almost took, a, and I think I did take a picture of that hotel that it happened in. Mm. I, every time I pass by it, I go to Plaque and I pass by it, it just, it, I relive it. It's I still there? It. Yes, I relive it. Now the Mexicans, uh, they got Mexicans coming in because they're working in that area. So I think they kind of rented it out to them. But I remember another thing, brother. I remember the lady that called me from Atlanta that normally has George Gloomer. And so here's the thing. This is, this is the other sticky part to it. And it shows you how church people are. I don't care who they are, what title they hold. Mm -hmm. They're going to try to cover up for, not cover, cover up is the difference. Cover up for the people that they like. Because it's really not about who they, what's right, it's about who they like. And I remember receiving this phone call, I was in a hotel, and I received a phone call from this pastor right there in Atlanta that always has Bishop George Boomer there. And she called me, she said, my members called me <clears throat> and told me, I needed to talk to you. She reached out to someone I knew. That person called me or reached out to me and say, hey, Pastor, I want to talk to you. And so I said, here's my number. She gave me her number. Uh, and I said, uh, let's have a conversation. So she said, I just need to know. Uh, she said, my members told me I needed to talk to you. And they, I heard this, they, they heard all this audio of this bishop cussing. Here's the other part to it. They heard all this cussing. And I have him every year. I've been having him for many, 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 many years. Mm -hmm. And the question was, why did you record it? I wanted to say, B, <laughs> you got the audacity to ask me why? You need to ask him, why did he do it? And, and I just, well, why did you, what made you record it? Lady, did you call me? to console me and try to bring healing to me? Or are you trying to find a way to cover, still cover up for this man, mm. your pastor? Mm. 
And I didn't, afterwards, I didn't, I wasn't thinking about it because she was well known in the city. She's well known in the city. I didn't think about it while I was talking to her until I felt my left side jumping. I felt like I was going to have a stroke. Mm. I knew I was going to have to stop because talking about it made me relive it. And, you know, everybody wanted to know, well, what happened? Well, go listen to the, go listen. I said, go to, I said, go to to, the Cigar Blogger's page. Go listen to it. I can't talk about it anymore. Mm -hmm. Because rehashing it, I had to keep reliving it, right? Mm -hmm. And so she asked me, you know, she said, well, are you okay? I said, I'm okay. Are you safe? Did you get any threats? No. I mean, I got a lot of family members. And then you might see me alone, but I'm not by myself. Mm-hmm. And so anyway, <laughs> mm-hmm. anyway, mm-hmm. listen, lo, I'll be with you always. That's the right. The earth. That's the scripture. And so um, I was just baffled by the fact that she would ask me that. But you mm-hmm. know, you know what church people had a disdain for? Him cursing. Not what he was accused of, the profanity. People are crazy. You know what I get attacked for the most? This? He up there smoking cigars. He up there drinking brown liquor. Well, let's talk about what they have in their mouth. Right. But they talk Uh, about- What they had in their mouth. Right. They They talk about me doing that, but they ignore what I'm talking about. Yeah, because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, deflecting. Let's deflect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's take the attention off of what really matters. Because see, black folks are good at that. We we hurt ourselves. We talk about what doesn't. We are loud about what doesn't. We we are loud about what doesn't matter. Right. We're silent on the things that does matter. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so. They were so disgusted by his profanity, and that was present day profanity. They weren't even they weren't interested in the crime that was committed. Mm-hmm. And you know what else? Everybody that knew about it, I can get all of them, including Shirley Caesar, because she knew about it. He was her associate pastor, mm. and she had talked with the then pastor with Bloomer on the line with her daughter. Right? Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody safe in this. So you and, can sing, you can talk about hold my mule mm-hmm. and green beans, potatoes, and all of that, mashed potatoes and carrots. Mm-hmm. You know about it. Yeah. And when you know about it, you're supposed to report it as a leader. Yep. And, and as the as the law requires that you do. It ain't nobody safe, brother. The law requires if you know of a crime, if you're a school teacher they, or uh, somebody in the clergy, you're required by students. law to report yeah. those crimes. But they, they didn't but, want to report because they got victims of their own. Right. And then the person that um, was trying to suppress your story, a couple of weeks ago, they had a ceremony for Carlton Pearson. And she made an appearance. But remember the audio that we played, the person that uh, made a statement about her church being a church for the gays of all types. But During I, that I looked, time when George Bloomer was the, let me tell you exactly what was said. During mm-hmm. the time George, that was during the time George Bloomer was her associate pastor. Mm-hmm. And me and Le- had, had that conversation. He said, well, yeah, that was during the time that her church, Caesar's church, was uh, uh, known the games of all time. And we got that on audio and played it. I ought to play it again. You ought to play it again. I can't. I can. Yeah, you can. You sure can. Yeah, I sure can. I still got every audio. I got the audio between me and uh, the unmedicated blogger. Oh. Mm. (laughs) The one who claims that he broke the story. Oh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's what's going around now. That he the must story was given from him to me. But you were the one that gave me your story. You gave me permission to do your story. Broke the story. He must be talking about his bank account. Oh. Mm. <laughs> mm. Got the well, crown you on. His, you mean broke broke is the Ten Commandments? Yeah. <laughs> oh, your, your boy. Viewers, 
Your your viewers gonna think I've lost it. I can't see. No man, I mean them. it's good to see that you that weight is off of you. It's gone, brother. Cause uh, when we the night we did that interview, you were crying. I was crying. My son was crying. Cause he got when we dropped you off back at the hotel and we were coming home to, to unpack the equipment. He said that's the hardest thing I've ever had to be involved in. He said wow. that was. What he went through was horrible that he had to hold it in that long. He didn't realize. He said he's held that in longer than I've been alive. I said, yeah. Yes. And he's finally getting to talk about it. I said, yeah, because of you yeah. helping me, he got to tell his story. And he when I edited, when I was editing your video, it was so heavy on me. My son would come in the basement when I was down there editing. He said, Pop, just take a break, man. Go outside. Go outside for a minute. Get your head and then come back. Because I, I worked on that thing for three days straight, all day long. Wow. And it was so hard because I was like, I, if, I, if I wasn't there and somebody played it, and a lot of people didn't want to believe it, but when I was, I was there operating this camera equipment and listening to you tell your story and interviewing you and my son behind the camera, and I'm like, it was like a, I know how I felt, and I can only imagine how hard it was for you to do it. Yes, it was but, an, it was an embarrassment. Uh, that's why I held it so long. But when I lost the embarrassment, that's when I came forward. Mm -hmm. You see, you got to lose the shame of it. Yeah. Uh, I just re I just reshared it when it showed up on my story mm -hmm. on my Facebook. I reshared it. I yeah. said this four years ago. I shared my story. Mm -hmm. I just reshared. It. So I mean, and, and had it, you not told me that I had forgotten that it had been that long, I did not know it was four years. I thought maybe two, three years ago, because so much has happened. Uh, my my father died. Eighteen months later, my mother died. My, yes, I next remember. Yeah, next month will be a year she's been gone. So I had so much going on. My son graduating high school. I had COVID. Uh, all my other stuff that I was dealing with in and out of court. I mean, just everything. So I didn't even realize that it had been four years. With this, well, yeah, me neither. When it showed and, up on my, and not only that, four years to the day we find out about this court case with the word network suing George Bloom and using the interviews and the audios that we put out there as evidence yeah, it, against him. Yeah, because the link said that since then the person is an adult and got audio of him saying what he said. I was mm -hmm. shocked to see that I had no idea. Uh, but just call my name, I'll be there, I'll be there, oh, yeah. oh Lord, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, was, I grew up in the church. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I grew and, up in the as church. As crazy now. as I act, my dad was chairman of the deacon board and my mother was uh Head of deaconess. So. Yeah, I grew up in the churches, but ain't nothing nobody can tell me about the church. Mm -hmm. uh, I love the true church. I love, mm -hmm. you know, I don't really go to anybody's church. And th that's another thing. They wanted to find out who I knew and mm -hmm. who I was connected to. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something that uh, Jordan wanted to know. Well, who, who do you know? Who are you connected to? They wanted to see if they needed to do some damage control. Yeah. See, I, I, I even know about the time <clears throat> that um I'm gonna share this. I even know about the time that Jordan wanted to go over there to give at Flanders, uh, that she was having some conference with bishops and all of that. He mm -hmm. wanted to go there. And uh, uh he, he wanted to know how could they do this without losing everything because they really wanted to be inclusive. Right. Now let, that's why I want to talk about that inclusive thing. You you tell you talk about that because you have the inside track to that. Please explain to the audience about that church of inclusion concept. Yeah, the church of inclusion. So I believe this. God never God always intended for the church to be inclusive. That includes everybody, not just one group of people. It's inclusive. I know that man made has said inclusivity and we're going to accept this that and the other your sexuality that blase 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 but you've always had gay people running the church you will remove the gay people out of the church you i promise you half of them are going to be gone you won't have a church you won't have a choir you won't have a musician 
you won't even, but most of them won't even have a preacher. Because mm. <laughs> they're behind the closet. They, you know, they're in the closet. Mm -hmm. or, well, a glass closet because everybody can see through it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I remember he wanted to go, he wanted to, he wanted to find out. He said, according to a great source, mm -hmm. to her, I want to just, you know, want to figure out how to, they were, they wanted to know how do we do this without losing everything? Because they didn't want to be on the, another cartoon piercy where the mm -hmm. church, they lose everything. Well, the church been done with Bernard. I mean, it, they never got on with him. He was just a late night guy on BET doing those prophecies. Well, back in the, the day, back in the day, though, he was, he was, he was, he was when he was, when he was, he was back in the day. Okay. But then when he kind of did his own thing, uh, you know, the, the church is afraid of the metaphysical world, which that is the world that they say you should live in. They just, the name, they don't, but anyways, um, so he wanted to go to um, her stuff and they wanted to find out how do we do this? All of them wanted to find out, including the other blogger, how do we do this without losing everything? Mm -hmm. like, how do we go inclusive without losing everything? Because I believe it, that the, the, the undercurrent was, let me tap into the LGBTQIA, ABCD, EFG, HHK, Y, LMNOP, um, back up. Let me, I'm not making mockery, but there's a lot of names, there's a lot of letters to it. Yeah, the over, over a fifth of the, yeah, over a fifth of the alphabet. They wanted to know how to tap into that income. Mm -hmm. and Say that again, the income, like, yeah, the income. They wanted the income. It wasn't about the people. It was about it the money. About, it was about the money. It's about how do I tap into the LGBT community's income? Because that's what it's about. It's all about money, right? Mm -hmm. Because they, they, there was a case with him where his member, Boy, I tell you, I, they're going to be surprised that I know this, that this member was about to lose his house, husband and wife. Mm -hmm. given yeah, all tell tell to, that story. Tell that story. They've been giving all this money to Bernard, but all this money, 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 right? Mm -hmm. And these people was about to lose their home. Mm -hmm. They went back to Bernard and said, um, listen, we're about to lose our home. And they were told, listen, you don't see anywhere in the Bible where the people come to the prophet asking them to give them something you come to the prophet with your gifts you give things to your prophet you don't give the prophet ain't giving you no money you give money to the prophet mm. you see and they lost their house there's a lot of trickery and all of that kind of craziness that goes on and the turning and twisting of the scripture and they're quoting they're not quoting scripture they're quoting scripture they have stripped the scripture mm. Yeah, they're using scripture, not scripture. They strip the scripture to make it fit them. So you don't come to the prophet asking them for anything. You bring the prophet gifts. Prophet, don't, you don't ever see anywhere in the Bible with prophet bringing them gifts. So, anyways, so they wanted to know how to tap into the LGBT community. And though, so when I when they found out, I said it to the unmedicated blogger, and the unmedicated blogger to credit for it. Because when it mm. came out, it was like, see, you said that you was on point. But the unmedicated pop blogger didn't tell. I was the one that said it because I had good connection with the person that he was trying to go to, right? Mm. I mean, I knew people that was connected to her, right? And so I said, well, they're trying to figure out how to go inclusive without losing everything. And could not just show up to that because it got out. Mm. But I was, the, I was the one that put it out there because I knew. Mm. So these people have scams and schemes. They're schematic. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was listening to you. Yeah, the the the, the people they, they are interested in your money. They're not interested in you as a group of people, as a community of people. They want your money because it is known that the LGBT community has the, the community has money, mm -hmm. and so they want to be inclusive. They want. No, not really. They want to wear the name of inclusivity so that they can get your dollars and cents. Mm -hmm. It's not about you as, as an individual or a community of people. They want your moolah. Show me the money. Money, money, money. Money. It's all about the money. Mm -hmm. And so when you have money, though, 
You can't be controlled by something you already have. Mm -hmm. So in that money vein, didn't you refresh my memory? In order to be connected to Jordan, you had oh, to be yeah, a property. Had, you had to be a property owner, right? You could. You just, needed to be a property owner. Yes, you needed to have your own your own house. There were certain requirements rules that, that you needed because he didn't want broke people around him. Mm. You needed so, to own your own house. So you if you had an apartment, you couldn't be around him. I'm trying to think of a good buy song. <laughs> You can't get, listen. You can't be in his circle, circle unless you own. You had to have money. He reached out to a certain demographics, right? Of people. I only wanted that. So, so, yeah, man. Is he still at odds with his son Manasseh? Uh, probably in his heart, but publicly, you know, people would love you publicly and hate you privately. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> they have to have an image. One of the things I realized, I mean, because I don't know. Let me just say this. I don't know. Let me just be clear. I don't know. But one thing I do know about people, because I see something out there about Jake's. They're coming together on that, right? Mm -hmm. People can dislike each other. But when each individual that they dislike, dislike the same person, they, they'll they come together for that. Mm -hmm. Like they did with me. Them. Like yeah, they they'll come together. They'll come together for that to fight that person. They hated each other, but they hated me more. So they all formed yeah. an alliance. Yes, but and it's I'm always. Still standing. Uh, I am still here, and it's by the grace of God. It's by the grace of God. Uh -huh. Yeah. I don't mean to be on here singing on your uh, man. Do what you do, I'm brother. I'm glad to <laughs> see you in a good space. Did but you know I sung on Bobby Jones' show back in the early '90s? Wow. No, you didn't know that. I wow! Did. Wow! Yeah. So, how did you meet Jordan and Manasseh and all them? Because you knew you. Well, so I know. Let me just say this, because um, I don't like. So let me just say this. I'm yeah. not friends with any of them. Mm -hmm. But I was connected to someone that knew all of them. Mm -hmm. And I came to the meetings. Uh, as a matter of fact, on Easter Sunday, me and uh, Manasseh were supposed to do work together in Houston at this church. Mm -hmm. See, that's the part of me that people don't know. I've traveled quite a bit, right? Um, and he could not come because he's got a bigger door. I think Jamal Bryant called him. Mm -hmm. to come during that time. So it was all about Hargo. It was all centered around Hargo, Joseph Hargo. So um, I met Jordan at Hargo's birthday celebration. And I sat next, I, I sat right there. We had a conversation, which is I still have his number. That's why on, the, on that recording, I told him who I was. He didn't know me, but I said, I know you. And I started calling out, I think the last four digits of his number or the first three digits of his number. And it baffled them because he just didn't remember. And so uh, I never called him mm. during that time. I only called him when his story came out and he wanted to talk to me. Uh -huh. But then I guess after they talked and I tried to call him back, he didn't answer my call. Right, right. And so I've never called him since. I had no reason to call them because um, just I just had I didn't have that kind of connection. Uh, with him. I mean, mm -hmm. I've been in places where I've seen him miss on so many occasions until mm -hmm. prophesying the people that was off. And so mm -hmm. I remember in, in Vegas, we was at the BAPS conference. If you're listening, you know I know. It was at the BAPS conference, bishops of prophets, apostles, prophets, and pastors conference for Hargo in Las Vegas. I was there. Mm -hmm. And I remember the ladies that was walking out, hey, you, you got pain on the side, left side of the eye. She said, no, that ain't me. Well, you got this something going on, ain't me. And he said, all right, go on. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> now, I mean, he could have had one of those off moments. Uh, I don't I don't know. Just never been a follower. Mm -hmm. um, not that anything is wrong. 
I just, you know, we have people that we connect to, right? Mm -hmm. So that's how I sort of knew of, I remember him back in the day though, back in, mm -hmm. back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't have, I hold no claims to them. I don't, I don't know them personally. I, I, the only time I've sat down to eat with anybody was at that uh, birthday celebration and that was it. Um, mm -hmm. didn't, didn't get a chance to uh, meet personally with, with uh, Manasseh, um, but been connected with Hargo. I was connected with Hargo at some point. Um, I knew because we were, he was trying to connect both of us together to work in the service. And so it, that's just what it was. Well, at least that's what he told me, so, whether it's true or not. But I, I mean, I watched Manasseh matriculate and grow up. But again, I was sitting in the car when Manasseh called Hargo to tell him about the money her dad stole from him. Mm. <laughs> mm. I'll tell you, I was there. Mm. Not something somebody told me I'm sitting in the back. And I think that was the Bentley that maybe he brought him. I, I don't know if Manasseh brought up with that Bentley. It was a used Bentley, but he had a Bentley. Or maybe it was the, the money he got. I, I have no idea. I know I was sitting in the back of the Bentley mm -hmm. on the right side. And that's when the phone call came. If y'all mm. listening to this, you know I'm telling the truth. Manasseh, you can reach out to me as well. Mm. If y'all were trying to throw hexes and curses, it ain't going to work. Mm. Stir your dark magic, it ain't gonna work. Yeah, because I know yeah. how to close portals. Mm. Listen, I have closed portals. You can try mm. that foolishness with me if you want. Yeah, because they it's been said that by people over that way, the Bible is a book of spells. They don't even know how to spell the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Man. It's crazy. Y'all can talk to the dead and necromancing and all that kind of stuff. Like, listen, man, I'm telling you, I have an arsenal of information. And just it is what it is. I'm glad to see you doing well, brother. Oh man, I'm in a I'm in a much better place. I'm happy. Uh, I stepped away from this stuff for a while because I was just so burned out. You know, when you lose two parents just like that and other life events going on, sick, uh, dealing with the death of your parents, burying them, you know what it's like having them prepared. Yeah, you know, writing obituaries and laying out your clothes that your parents gonna be buried in and making those final arrangements. It takes its toll on you. It takes its toll. It's traumatizing. I made a live today about that, about what else, you know, with the trauma that I experienced in the church and losing my mother, uh, mm -hmm. On top of uh, prior to that, well, yeah, uh, it's. I, I think I can endure anything. Mm-hmm. When you, you find out what you made of, yeah. When you lose a parent, and they so for me, it's. I saw a mother that took care of eight children by herself, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And to see someone so strong now become so weak, mm -hmm. bone cancer. It was traumatizing, brother. Mm-hmm. Your and hero, that, you see your then, hero fade away. And then on top of that, fighting, the family's fighting. Somebody's mm -hmm. jealous because I'm the power of attorney and uh, the oldest, uh, the, uh, it's just a bunch of, you know, so you, you haven't, you've got the duality of wars, right? You have, mm -hmm. you have to protect your mother from the people she birthed. Mm-hmm. And they fighting because somebody mad because they're not the power of attorney. They ain't got no mm -hmm. say so. So they try to step in the way and throw up roadblocks. It's mm -hmm. a lot that goes. It's a through. lot on you. Yeah, it's a lot. And so I understand losing or when a parent transition that you were so close to because not everybody ain't close to their parents, right? That's true. So when you're close to them and you have a connection with them and then you see them, it leaves my heart. There's still an emptiness in my heart. Every day. Every right. day. The month of December, I went through. I was, I was grieving, mm -hmm. and this month would be seven years that my mother would have transitioned, and um, it's hard, brother. It is, and uh, but what gives me comfort is that I know that when they were here, I did all I could do. Same here. I live with no regrets. Right. I'm like, 
I did what I could do, and they knew that I loved them. Oh yeah, and, so, and that's all you can do. And the rest is up and up to God, you know, to give me the strength to go each day. Um, but I prayed I, for you. I prayed for you during that time. I know I went absent. I, I was not. Uh, I was not absent, but I was uh, almost like a absent but present. Mm -hmm. uh, I watched you, uh, but I had to have my time of healing. Yeah, yeah, of uh, course. And so I had to pull away from social media. I had to pull away to mm -hmm. just figure out um, where I was and uh, figure out this other part of me and who mm -hmm. I am mm -hmm. and how do I move forward from this. Uh, I didn't watch any of the other bloggers um, um, or anything. I know they tried to dog me out because they couldn't make any money from me and because of right, the, yeah, you know, yeah. Out. Uh, but it, that one thing I understand is uh, the truth needs no defense. Never. And you don't have to. You can. People have to study to make up a line, try to figure out how to curtail the truth, how to mm. curtail it, and make it look like a line to change, mm -hmm. but. It was off of me. Once I said what I needed to say, it was off of me. They can make fun of it. They can they can try to um, change my story. Mm -hmm. They can people would try to uh, delegitimize your story. <clears throat> but when it all comes out, they were a part of the same thing that I that was the person that was a you know the accuser to. Uh, Lost for words. The same thing that the person was accused of, mm -hmm. they're also accused of it. Mm -hmm. They didn't want their victims to hear somebody else's voice matriculating through and uh, reverberating through the air mm -hmm. because they didn't want them to come forth. And I, and I take, I won't say blame for, but you really started going through when you started telling my story and playing those audios. I mm -hmm. think, I mean, they had a hatred towards you, anyways, mm -hmm. and because you were there, and it just uh, added fuel to the fire. Mm -hmm. uh, and now they're hearing their voice in their own voice. Mm -hmm. And you know, when they said to me, "Well, I, you probably recorded me," I said, "You, I said I did. Mm -hmm. I told them that. I said I did. And I said you probably recorded me too." And, you and that's when he play. laughed. And that's when he laughed on the yeah. recording. But you I have did. nothing to play because I've always told the truth, right? You have nothing. You can't trap me up. You can't. You can't try to trap me up. Trap my words up. I'm gonna always tell the truth, even if it's on me. Mm -hmm. So now moving forward, what what are your plans, or have you thought about it yet, uh, as it relates to Bloomer? Uh, we talked about it. Yeah. Yeah, we when I talked about it uh just recently. Um I won't give all the information out, but right. I mean I'm not right, done. Right, 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 right. Uh I'm not done. I have options. Mm -hmm. And um I'm not done. Uh, but think about it, it took me 30 years to talk about it. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it would be another level of exposure mm -hmm. uh, of reliving some of these things. And I know they wish that, if you notice, they stopped talking because they knew the damage, they knew the severity of this case. Mm -hmm. If you notice, I haven't heard, or maybe y'all have, George Boomer has not one time come forth and talked about it. He never tried to rebuttal it. I don't know of him trying to rebuttal our, he and I, our conversation that we had. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I have. That? I've never heard. I've never heard him try. Now, it's a smart thing to do. Just be quiet, because if you don't, you dig a, you're digging a hole with your mouth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he, other people, is trying to defend him. Mm -hmm. And they're doing a horrible job. Oh my God. So. Uh, I have some options. I won't, you know, me by now, I don't disclose, I don't show my hand before. It's, you know, I've, I've been this kind of person throughout life, and it's really true. 
And it's a principle. My mother used to say it, but I didn't know it was biblical. It's to never let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Mm. Uh, by the time people find out what I'm doing, I would have already been doing it for a while. Like when I moved here, I was here almost six months before I even let anybody know that I was here. I just don't believe in telling stuff. I don't want people to throw monkey wrenches in my plans. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's sort of where I've been, brother. I mean, I'm good. Mm-hmm. Um, now, if they if they want to set a, if they want to light a match, I can. I got plenty of gasoline. Mm-hmm. <laughs> plenty, plenty of gas. Gas. The high, the highest octane, brother. Mm-hmm. Now, you let them strike a match if they want to. I really do have. I just push a button, brother. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, Jimmy, I, I want you to go enjoy your birthday, man. Hit them streets and party. And thank you. Well, for- I'm not going. It won't be tonight because my birthday is tomorrow. It's nine fifty-five. Um, mm-hmm. I'll probably fly out somewhere tomorrow, or just take a. Uh, a bus over to uh, Santa Marta. That's mm-hmm. where the oceans and the mountains are. But I appreciate you, brother, and I want to say it to you publicly. I appreciate you. Thank you for not becoming more injurious mm-hmm. towards me when I gave you my story. Mm-hmm. The key word is, I gave you my story. Mm-hmm. I gave you my story. I gave you my story. Mm-hmm. And um, you weren't injured. You called and found out. You wanted to find out what is it. I, I want to make sure. I don't want. I don't want to re-injure you. And I thought that was that's commendable, brother. If somebody's already hurting, and then somebody decides they're gonna tell the story the way they want it without finding out how you want it to be told, and that's what happened with the one before you. Mm-hmm. And they made all types of posts. I still got that as well. I, I still got the posts that they made. They had me, George Boomer on there. They had all these people on there. And I had to call them. I said, hey, dude, take that down. You didn't get my permission to do this. I mean, I felt like I was a babysitter. So you didn't do that to me. You asked me, and I appreciate that. And I wish you well. I pray that God gives you strength. I know Thank you. parents are just, you know, I know you've been through a lot. Mm-hmm. And trust me. It was worth it. It Back was. In, yes, it, it was worth it. It was yeah, worth it. People got people got help that they needed, yeah. and they got the courage that they needed to speak out. And that's what got the ball rolling. And that's when yeah. I I was able to interview other people. Yes, and they trade. They came after you, but they didn't come after Tasha. But anyways, they sure did. Oh no, sir. They they they, they, they didn't come after the, Tasha, but they came after me. They wanted the insignificant block. Block to shut up. What was so insignificant about you that they had to try to shut you down? Mm-hmm. See, it's that you had the power and you had the evidence, and God was really on your side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because a lady, the truth. Because a lady prophesied to me. She said, "Young man," she said, "As long as you are telling the truth, God will be your protection." And every time mm-hmm. I got discouraged or frustrated, I remember what that old, older lady told me. She said, young man, the truth will be your shield. Yes, sir. And it was. Yes, sir. And that's why I'm still here. And you're in a better space. I'm in a better space. And we sleep good at night. Other people ain't sleeping so well. Brother, I sleep really good at night. I sleep like yeah. a baby. Yeah, I I sleep like a naked baby. I sleep good. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good sleep. You know, nothing the tying you down and, and holding you down. Nothing. Just, just <laughs> snoring with your head all the way back. Just snoring. I mean, I'm glad that I didn't give up. You yeah, know, I, I you look did. at myself you in did. the mirror and I said, I have to tell myself, I have to tell my younger self, thank you for not giving up. Mm-hmm. Thank you for not taking those pills. Mm-hmm. Because these people will still be going, doing what they're doing without nobody hearing this story, you know, nobody knowing about it. Mm-hmm. And now people know, and they can't defend that. They can't. They can't. They can't say, "Oh, that wasn't my voice. That was an AI." Mm-mm. That was you. <laughs> that was you and I in a, in, a, in a studio in Cleveland, Ohio, three hours yeah. and, and thirty let, minutes. And let me say this. Too. 
before you leave, let me say this. All this I see people doing, got pictures. I mean, I got pictures of Bishop Jacob. I, listen, people can cut and paste. All day. Can, all day long, they cut and paste. But y'all better leave Bishop Jakes alone because your day is coming. My mother will always say, every dog got his day. Because mm -hmm. they say they got a picture of that man in a thong holding a, a peach cobbler. I holler. That was the funniest thing to me. Well, you know, the thing I love about Jakes is he don't ever gay bash. He don't. One thing I heard him say years ago, he said, I don't bring people bedroom business in the pulpit. Mm -hmm. I don't do that. And, and the church, black church, they like for you to talk crazy and nasty and stuff in the pulpit. But that man has done the same man, the same person that they've ran to his conference. Now they're trying to kill him. Yeah. The same people he tried to help. I That's got to be a hurting thing. Hey, cuckoo for cuckoo yeah. puffs. You help somebody. Today, I'm your friend. You love me. You like me. But as soon as the first story breaks about you with no evidence. No evidence. You None. come to find. Well, if, it, if that's Jesus. all it takes for you to turn on me, you were never in my corner to begin with. They did it to Jesus, brother. Yep. One moment they were saying, who reigned the king of the Jews is here. The next moment they're out of the same mouth, crucified. Mm -hmm. And I have seen nothing credible yet. Now, like I said before you came on, I said, I don't know if he did it. I don't know if he didn't do it. But I, I, I have yet I to see. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't there. But I said, personally, I don't think he did it. But he could have. But I haven't seen anything that would convince me that he did. Because if you claim you got all his evidence, one, why didn't you file a police report? Two, why haven't you released the evidence? Three, why aren't you the one out here talking about it and somebody else is? Because they don't have it. One thing I live by principle, brother, St. John 3 and 11, the B clause of, it, of that verse. It says, speak what you know and testify to that that you've seen. And that's, I live by that principle. Speak what you know. I know it because I did it with you or I was there and I saw it with my own eyes. And I can only testify to the thing that I've seen. If you go to a court and they say, and they use you as a witness, and if you didn't see it, they can't use your testimony. Other than that, it's hearsay. Speak mm -hmm. what you know. I know it because I was involved. Testify to that that you've seen. I didn't see it. I heard it from somebody else. Mm -hmm. Those are principles that I live by. I wasn't there to see it. I don't know it. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear it. And if he did, God bless him. God forgive him. Let's talk about the stuff that other people have done. Mm -hmm. The same people that are trying to find something on him while they dig in dirt. Hands they're muddy. Dirt. They're not just dirty. They're muddy. Mm -hmm. It's the mud that's on them while they're yet trying to dig a ditch for somebody else. Mm -hmm. It ain't safe. It ain't good, brother. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you, and I want to tell the world, listen, brother, uh, listen, Daryl is my brother. The cigar blogger is my brother. And you helped me through this, and I talked about it on my live, on mm -hmm. my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And how you helped me get through this process. I'll forever be grateful for that. Thank you. I'm glad and I those can help. That, those, those people that have been on your channel and they've reached out to me as well to mm. encourage me. Thank you all. And somebody said, oh, he ain't saying nothing. They must have paid him off. That ain't true. He, he got his voice heard. I got my voice heard. That's what I want. I didn't want to pay out. I could have. Like so many others have with the same person. But I couldn't, that's not what I wanted. I wanted my voice to be heard. I needed a way out. I needed to vocalize what I was feeling so I can feel better. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't kill me. All right. Thank you, brother, for having me on. It's my pleasure, brother. Good night, everybody. All right. Tell the network. Just call my name and I'll be there. <laughs> All right. We out. We out, y'all. Right. Bye. Bye, brother. All right, brother. Take care. Happy birthday. Thank you.